Hello Canterbury, it is Friday the 22nd of August. We've got mischievous things happening in the background. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, yesterday, as you know, we had a book to give away thanks to Phyllis Brown and we were inundated with entries. And unfortunately, there can only be three winners and they are Anne Taylor, Cynthia Johnson and Michelle Birdling. Congratulations to you all for winning that beautiful book and Marianne will be in contact with you shortly and uh, how I can get it to you. Well, on today's show, um, it is the time of politics. Yes, it is. So we have um, a paid advertisement at the end and it is the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party. And I'm joined by father and son, Neil and Matt Templeton, to talk to me about a wonderful feat that they have completed together. But first up, very proud Southland I am of country music and I'm very, very proud now to throw it over to Pat Dugan with a beautiful song. Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head that didn't hurt. And the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad, so I had one more for dessert. Then I fumbled through my closet for my clothes and found my cleanest dirty shirt. And I washed my face, combed my hair, and trebled down the stairs to greet the day. Well, I'd smoked my brain the night before on cigarettes and songs we'd been picking. But I lit my first and watched a small boy cause another can he was kicking. Then I crossed the empty street and caught the Sunday smell of someone frying chicken. And it took me back to something that I lost somehow, somewhere along the way. On a Sunday morning sidewalk, wishing Lord that I was stoned. Ah, oh, there's something about a Sunday. It makes a body feel alone. Nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound Of a sleeping city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down In the park I saw a daddy with a laughing little girl, he was swinging. Then I stood beside the Sunday school and listened to the songs they were singing. Then I headed back for home, somewhere far away, a lonely bell was ringing. And it took some time, I don't know, God, I've blown it. On a Sunday morning sidewalk, wishing, Lord, that I was stoned. Ah, oh, there's something about a Sunday makes a body feel alone. And there's nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound Of a sleeping city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down On the Sunday morning sidewalk Wishing, Lord, that I was stoned 
Ah, there's something about a Sunday It makes my body feel alone And there's nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound Of a sleeping city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down Of a sleeping city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down And that's how you do it. After the break, we meet the legend Pat Dugan. Southern Newsweek is an Otago-based news bulletin. Produced locally in Dunedin, it's your chance to catch up on everything that's happening in the community. Southern Newsweek, Saturday at 6.30pm and repeated Sunday at 10am, right here on CTV. Come in and meet the locals at the Bush Inn Centre. Whether it's to grab a coffee on the go or to catch up with a friend over lunch or dinner, the Bush Inn Centre is the perfect place. With our unique range of shops, you'll find everything you're looking for and more. Our friendly locals are always happy to help. We have plenty of parking at the Bush Inn Centre, making your shopping experience just a little bit easier. So come in, meet the locals and shop Bush Inn. You'll find us on the corner of Rickerton and Waimari Roads. Have you seen something you like? You can purchase a copy of CTV's own shows so you can watch them again and again. So give us a call on 3777-033 and order a copy today. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! This could be nothing. Europe in concert. A new, fantastic international artist performing every week. Saturday evening at 7pm, right here on CTV. And as promised, the legend is now with me, Mr Pat Dugan. You Hello ha dear. Are you happy? No. What? Well, there's too many lovely women around here and I'm getting old. Oh, jeepers creepers. You've got a lovely woman at home, haven't you? I've got a champion woman at home. 64 years. 64 and a half, I think. Oh, and a half. Oh, jeepers yeah. Creepers. 65 right. next January, next February. February the wow. 7th. Jeepers. Yep. Heck, that's wonderful. Hey, look, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I don't know if you've realised this, but you're actually being interviewed by a ex Miss Junior Runner Up Gold Guitar Award yeah, winner. Yeah. Just be quiet. Don't tell anyone, though. Yeah, that's right. Second to my pupil. Yes, Melissa Burrows. <laughs> doesn't matter. It was a great thing. Hey Pat, thanks so much for making the time here um, to talk to us, but very excited. You've just been given a wonderful award. Tell us about that. Well, it's something that I, uh, Brendan and I always sang that song together. That's why I really wanted to sing it today, because of that, you see. Yep. And it's a song that I always sing, I'll never forget the words in, you see. Anyway, <laughs> we did, we went up there and we were invited up uh, to sing, and of course I thought when I got there that it was a Something that for Brendan and I. Right. And I'm standing side stage. Grey Bartlett's talking about the, what the story. And when you say up, up, you mean the 2014 National Music Country Awards. The, the yeah, National yeah. Country Music yeah. Awards of two, 2014, mm. yes. And Grey's out there getting all ready to present the prize, and I'm enjoying it because I'm going to go and sing next, you see. <laughs> and then he called my name out. Well, oh my God. I never had a clue. And it flattened me. And as I walked past Brennan, he says, gotcha. Oh. 
And I received it and they asked me to make a speech, so I went to make a speech and I couldn't speak. So I just said thank you and walked off the stage. They took the trophy off me, oh, this there. They took the trophy off me and the music started and I had to turn straight around and go back and start to sing. Well, the, the turmoil was awful, it was terrible. Anyway, I got through it and okay, and my dear said that I sounded good, so that was fine. And uh, anyway, halfway through, I still mixed up a wee bit with the shock I got. It really did shock. This old guy's 88. Shocks don't go too good at that age. <laughs> And I had two lady, two lovely ladies doing the, the Sharon and Rosemary, and they were doing harmonies up in the back. And I looked up to them, and they were they were throwing kisses to me. Oh, you so said the ladies. The crowd all saw it. The crowd all saw it. They, she, they knew I was in trouble, and they were waving and throwing kisses. So I threw them back to them, and the crowd started to laugh, and they it just picked me up, and away we went. Just like that. Yeah, and we, from then on, it was easy. What, what inspires you, Pat, after all these years, and you're the one that's saying about, you know, 64 years and a half of marriage and being 88 young, what keeps you going? The love of the stage, I would say. Uh, my dear loves me to be on the stage. She's a very proud lady. And uh, the family, I get wonderful support and from the country music people. From I've had wonderful support, support all my life from different people. Amazing people, you know, and I, I, I just love to love life and that's part of what I love doing, that's all. It's something quite special though, country music, isn't it? It is. Oh, I taught it for quite a few years and, and uh, I think that's really where this award came in because of the... Uh, yes, but you yeah. also received a, a QSM, didn't you, in 1990? That yeah, must have been yeah. a pretty proud day. That was services to country music and uh, charity organisations and so forth. But I, I, I like to sound as humble as I can because uh, they, they print me up, a lot of them say, the godfather of country music, which, <laughs> which I don't believe in at all because <laughs> when you look at Tex Morton and, and uh, Cole Wilson and all those people before me, and they call me the godfather, I think I'm just, I'm just following along in the, in the background myself. Yeah, well, you've got a wonderful family behind you, though. Oh, I think yes, that yes, helps, doesn't yes, it? Yes, I mean, yes. very musical. Yeah. You must be very proud of being a proud dad as well. Oh, yes, and great granddad as well as. And are they are the great grandchildren to music or grandchildren? They, they love music, but not country. Not country? No. Oh, well, you know, tell, them that, tell them that Molly Cyrus was into country. Hey? She wants to get into some clothes as well. Oh, <laughs> just quietly. Yeah, well, she's got a hot dog and anything else, but let's move quite along. Hey, um, what's a tip for someone that maybe wants to get into music? What would you say to them? Be modest. Mm -hmm. Be a good learner. Remember that when you're off stage, you're being judged just as well by people. And if you make a fool of yourself off stage, you're going to make a fool of yourself when you get up there because people won't like you. Mm. And remember that when you go on a stage, as soon as, as, soon as your name is mentioned, that's where your act starts. Well, you are a class act, my friend. Am I? Thank you. Yes, you are, Pat. And I tell you what, Coral is a very lucky lady. Thanks for joining us today. She's a lucky... I'm, I'm a very, <laughs> very lucky man. <laughs> hey, stay with us. After the break, um, we have more Canterbury Live. Loose Lips is a new woman-only weekly chat show made for Cantabrians where nothing is sacred and no topics are out of bounds. Loose Lips starts Thursday the 29th of May at 8.30 CTV. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family-owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24-7 for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood. We're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood. What drives you? Looking for that perfect gift for a loved one? Wanting to add some vibrance to your home? Or just looking to brighten up your workplace? No matter the occasion, the Hitching Post has something for everyone. Lose yourself in their extensive range of homeware, art, glass and plasma cut metalwork. The Hitching Post is your one-stop shop for great style and quality. 
So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measure and quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Bryham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Arts 21 showcases the vast creative talent and minds that are making a name for themselves in Europe and beyond. Think outside the square with Arts 21. Well, I've just finished talking to Pat and how family is so important, and I'm joined by another family duo, father and son, Matt. How are you? Not too bad, how Very are good. you? Very good. And Dad, Neil. Hi. Now, a big congratulations to you both. Please tell the viewers, Neil, what you have just completed with your son, which I think is just wonderful. Well, for the first time in club history, we had a father and son grading that we both achieved our first black belt. So it was a, quite a journey, and we both trained together and graded together and it was a long, hard, but uh, quite a, an interesting day. Yeah. What an amazing accomplishment, Matt. Have you always been interested? So you belong to um, Aikido Shinra Khan, Canterbury, is that right? Yes, it is. So how long have you actually, did you start at the same time as Dad? Yeah, we've been training for three and a half years now, roughly, um, since February 2011, I believe. So wow. training together three, four times a week since then and got our black belt last uh, month or two ago now. Well, you know, actions speak louder than words, apparently. <laughs> so I, I believe that we've actually got some footage here and maybe you can talk us through exactly what we're viewing. So here we are here. Okay, this is uh, me doing what they call sawari raza, which is a kneeling techniques. And there are four different pins, so I'm basically just doing we're going through the process of those four pins in that technique. Kind of traditional, being on the knees. The Aikido developed from other Japanese martial arts, and so it was, you may have been attacked when you were, were seated. So okay. you go through this process. So currently I'm beating up Cecilia. <laughs> it sounds dramatic with the, um, the padding, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Jeepers, it's like a Japanese film. Mm. Now this has mm. gone to Hane Handachi, where a person standing is attacking the person kneeling. Uh, so this is me doing what we call um, a kind of free technique. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm receiving techniques from Jordan there and just doing any techniques that pop off the top of my head. Just <laughs> kind of going with it. Um, so that there was a, what we call a sumiatosh. And the purpose of this technique is just, we do it in gradings as well, is just showing what you know and showing that you can all go off the top of your head and you, you know more than the basic techniques and you can string them together. And showing that you can break the person's balance. Ah, okay. the, the beauty of Aikido is it's not about strength. Well, that's good to know. Now, part of Aikido also is uh, around weapons and weapons taking. So. This is Gary taking the three different weapons that we, we will train with. The pole is a Joe, the bokken is a big wooden sword, and the other is a small dagger called a tanto. And so they're all coming in with the normal like basic attacks you take from that weapon, although there are more, they're just doing the basic, um, the basic entries so Gary can do techniques off them. We got him to do it because he's probably the best at weapons in the club. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> and this is Cecilia and Mags going through a kata with the Joe. You don't really do a lot with weapons up until the brown and black belt stage. Okay. And the first time they come into a grading is in the black belt. This is purely a girly thing, but I love the oh. uniform. <laughs> oh, the hakama? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's just a purely girly thing to say, <laughs> but I know, but no, no, this, fad. These are just a couple of things to show um, basically self-defence, particularly women's self-defence. 
And as I said before, Aikido is, is not so much about strength, because Matt is, or Jordan here, is significantly bigger than Mags. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that acting there. It's like, <laughs> I'm just going down here. I've just been to New World. I've got my little bag of groceries. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. great. Oh, we had a lot of fun putting these together. It was just a group of us got together on Saturday afternoon. And this is four of us eventually attacking Gary. Okay. So, it's all on one, yeah. really. <laughs> and it looks, one of the complaints people have about Aikido is it looks contrived. But actually, what Gary's doing is breaking your balance. And if we didn't flip, we'd face plant. Right. So that, that wouldn't be so cool. No, not, no. not a good look. <laughs> no. And when more people come in, you put people in front of the other so that they uh, get in the way. It kind of looks like it's staged and we're all just kind of faking. It does that. look very um, Really, crude. there's no other yeah. way to mm. take it. No, it's yeah. very cool. Are you competitive with each other? <laughs> no. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, I can tell the underlining there. Just a yeah. tad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any major injuries? Um, I've got a couple of black eyes now and again, uh, one of which was from Dad oh, nice. hitting me in the, Jeez, in okay. the eye with a tanto. Yeah. <laughs> A little um, secret there, but yeah. um, <laughs> my shoulder has popped in and out a couple of times. Oh, but not not overly bad. Yeah. And oh, I've had no. a dislocated finger, courtesy of Matt striking me. So now I can't get my wedding ring off, much to Fleur's. Really? <laughs> Did you yeah. not cook Dad any eggs or anything <laughs> like that? Okay, okay. No. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. So what can we do if we want to get involved? If you know, we've seen Dan and thought, mm -hmm. oh, that I could do that. Yeah. You can do that. Anyone yeah. can do it. Well, not me personally, but oh, yes, someone out could. there. Um, <laughs> how can we get involved? Um, you can look on the club website, which is ChristchurchAikido.co.nz. Mm -hmm. That has the locations. The club has two dojos, one on... Uh, Pages Road. Pages Road, just on Pages, and one on Clyde Road. So, um, mm. Anyone can come along and trial at, uh, at any of the sessions, and the first one is free. We have classes uh, pretty much all week. Yeah. have at least one or two classes a day and they range from basic classes where the beginners would go and learn all the basic techniques to uh, general which is a step up and then advanced classes on Sunday which is black belts going at it. Mm. Going at it, yeah. I love it, <laughs> just going at it, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. so what's next? I mean, wow, big thing, two of you together, black belt, but what's, what's the next challenge for you? Um, I guess going for our second arm black belt, our knee arm, in two years, if everything mm. goes to plan. So it's in stages then? Yeah, it there's, yeah. it's I think two years before you can go from your shodan to your knee arm, which is first and second, and then I believe it's three years, oh. although or 21. So I couldn't go for my uh, third black belt until I was 21. So, so I might be able to sneak ahead of them there. Yeah, I was just going to say that, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, hey, thank you so much for joining me. You must be very proud. Proud dad, but mm. hey, proud partner in crime. <laughs> no pun intended. <sighs> Don't take these guys when you've got a supermarket bag coming from Countdown New World. <laughs> hey, have an awesome weekend. Thanks you for too. joining you me. Too. Thank you very hey, much. Has, yeah, that's all right. It's been a great, great show today. It's wonderful having um, father and son and with Pat. That was just too amazing. Hey, coming up on Monday, we have The Man Cave and Anne Stone joins me, as well as Literacy Director involved with World um, Literacy Week, and that's Rachel King.